Hello, I'm Stuart Wilde. In the 1970s, Professor Lovelock came up with his theory of Gaia, and he described Gaia as an intelligence that connects all these bio-ecosystems. So the tree falls and another tree grows out of the dead bark and the little bugs consume the waste matter and so forth. And he said that this planet had this self-correcting intelligence. We see Gaia as a little bit more than just a planetary management system. We see her as a goddess in the Aluna, and she has the planet as her physical body, just as humans, we believe, are spiritual beings that are inside a physical form, the human body. And then we look at Gaia and we see her sadness, her tears, because of the abuse that we inflict upon her ecologically and the cruelty that we inflict because we kill millions, billions of her children every day to feed ourselves. And so as we go through this process of trying to become more, we also understand we have to have a connection to Gaia, we have to have a connection to this nature. Otherwise you just get lost in the evil of the mind and, and all of those things. So this little sequence that follows is just me talking about the animals and their pain. Thank you. Gaia is very beautiful in her digital fractal geometries and stunning arrays of colors, but our cruelty makes her shudder. Watch this magnificent jaguar here. You can see it has perception, a feeling. It is not a dumb animal, it has a soul. You can see it in its eyes. Animals communicate, they live in families. They know their children and their relatives. There is a bond of love between them, a generosity of spirit, a belonging. Wolves howl for days and days when one of their pack dies, and they visit the bones of dead relatives to mourn the passing of a member of their tribe. Animals and birds have friendships and love affairs, and they express kindness and tenderness towards each other. They evolve spiritually as we do, often staying with the same partner for life. Animals work together in organized units, hunting for food and gathering the things they need, or they engage in surveillance, making sure the group is kept safe from danger. We often see horses in the Aluna mirror world talking. We don't know exactly what they're saying, but we can watch them communicate. It is most extraordinary. The mother's love for her cub is obvious, just as a human loves its child, and yet our cruelty is so cold and loveless there's a terrible karma waiting for us. We saw a cattle truck pass and we could see the cows were crying blood. There was no reason for their sacrifice to be made just so fat people can waddle to the hamburger stand and become even fatter. It's so pointless. And the way we treat the animals, keeping them prisoners in such squalid conditions, is so disturbing, it is so humiliating for the animals, and it is degrading to us humans. It rots our soul. And to be strung up like prisoners on a gallow with no prayers or dignity or proper care for their spirit is an affront that will not be lightly forgiven. For we can hear from the lunar worlds the terror humans create in the force fields of Gaia. And that has to be shown to people. Gaia will now show us her pain, her tears. So we wake up and realize the agony we cause. Before we see the dawn of the brave new world, the vengeance of Gaia will be upon us. She has to stop us to survive. And so she will take back this world, back to the sanctity and peace it once knew, back to where proper justice is restored. You can ingest fear and hatred and die in the same way, in the cold arms of the embrace of your cruelties. Or you can choose compassion and love, and radiate your kindness and divinity to the animals, and all will be restored and made whole. Come, let us embrace a new way and evolve. It is time now. Thank you. This is Stuart Wilde.